Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, or whenever it is that you're watching this. Um, I'm popping in to say hello, and today we are going to dive in and we're going to talk real and raw as it relates to comfort zones. Now, I am between an iPad and a phone because I want to be on Instagram and Facebook at the same time because I want to make sure everyone gets these goodies, all right? So um, the reality is we all have comfort zones, and if I can be very transparent with you, I have... Usually when I go live, I have an idea. I get in a level of inspiration. I'm like, okay, I have this really cool idea. I'm going to dive in and talk about it. But if I can be honest, this has been on my heart probably for the past week or so. And so I actually took some time to really write out what it is that I wanted to share because I did not want you guys to miss a thing. Um, my own journey of breaking free of my comfort zone was probably one of the scariest things that I ever committed to, but it was the most invigorating, most enlightening, and more, most transformational experience that I've ever gone through. So many of you have been following me for some time know that I made a commitment this year to myself, a year-long commitment to me. And now that was not the beginning of this year. This was actually about three short months ago. And um, I committed to believing in myself because the reality is a lot of times we don't believe in ourselves. We can be our own worst critic and that impacts us when in reality we need to be our own biggest cheerleader. And so this commitment that I made was 100% believing in me, believing in me when it was hard, believing in myself when it was easy, believing in myself when it, things were looked beautiful, believing in myself when things were ugly, right? Because I knew that the outcome would be worth it. But, um, if I can be totally honest, that does not mean that it was always easy. That does not mean that it was always fun. Um, and I am still on that journey to 100% committing in myself, right? Um, and believing in myself and being my, my greatest cheerleader. And so through this, I have had to break past multiple comfort zones. A comfort zone beyond a comfort zone, beyond a comfort zone, beyond a comfort zone, and like continuous comfort zones. Because if I can be honest, with each new level, there's new devils, right? There's that those comfort zones that try to pull us back into it. So if you're new to comfort zones, Let's break it down. Let's talk about exactly what a comfort zone is and more importantly, how we're going to break free of those things for good. Okay. So simply put, a comfort zone is a self-imposed boundary that prevents you or causes you to refuse to push beyond it. Um, and so an example of a comfort zone may be like, you know what, I really, really want to start my business, but you're comfortable in staying where you're at at your job because it's safe, you got this like reliable paycheck, and you're like, yeah, I'm going to stay exactly where I'm at. While comfort zones feel extremely comfortable, they feel extremely relatable, they, they even feel normal, quote unquote, they, there's no growth in our comfort zone. There's no potential to move beyond, uh, beyond where we are to where we want to be as long as we normalize our comfort zone. And so um, when the idea, when we move on that idea and we're like, all right, I got to move beyond my comfort zone. Maybe you've heard someone say it. Maybe you've been called out for it, whatever it may be. A lot of times we will be bound by nervousness, by anxiety, by overwhelm. And that will cause us to want to go back into our comfort zone. But I'm here to tell you, that moving beyond your comfort zone is where the real success and the real growth lies. And that's where the real transformation takes place. That's where like all the outcomes that you really want for your life happen. And unfortunately, I read a quote recently that said the graveyard is the rich, richest place in the world because there are so many people that died with powerful ideas, world changing ideas, but never took action on them. And it's not because they didn't believe in their idea necessarily. Maybe some of them struggled with that. But if I can be honest, the reason that people died with amazing ideas is because of a comfort zone, because that comfort zone sells us this false idea that it's the place that we need to be. And I'm here to tell you that breaking free of your comfort zone is what you need to commit to, okay? So in order for you to first understand the importance of breaking free of your comfort zone, I always say that it's important to see other people that have been able to break beyond their comfort zone, other people that have been able to move beyond that. So one person that always comes to my mind is Oprah Winfrey. Anyone who knows me knows that I love me some Oprah Winfrey. She's dope. She's amazing. Love her to pieces. But if you look at the way in which Oprah was raised, the childhood in which she grew up in, the household that she was raised in that was normalized, they were poor. They struggled financially. Um, there were a lot of other things. Um, she dealt with a lot of like different kind of abuse. There were just a lot of things going on. But look at Oprah. Oprah is the, one of the richest people in the entire world. She owns 
her own TV station, like, and she continues to give back doing, has her hands in multiple different pots, right? Um, but that was because Oprah made a decision to break beyond, to move beyond that comfort zone. And the reason that I share that with you today is because just like she made a decision, you have a decision for yourself as well. Thank you so much for the love. You have a decision to make for yourself as well. Um, and that begins with acknowledging first and foremost that you have a comfort zone to begin with, that your comfort zone is in your way to begin with. A lot of times we do not, we don't even want to call it out for what it is because again, we normalize it. We make it seem like, oh yeah, this is like where it's supposed to be. So that first step is to identify that you're in your comfort zone and to understand what is your comfort zone, okay? Um, I wish I could, I'm going to do my best to explain it, but there's like an image. If you can picture a circle, the circle is your comfort zone, right? And then outside of the circle is where the things are that you want. Inside of the circle are the things that you're doing regularly, the thoughts that you have, the habits that you have, the behaviors that you have, the actions that you take, the people you surround yourself with, the decisions you make, all those things are inside the circle, right? Um, and while the circle seems cool because it's, you know, familiar, it's almost like a, it's almost like a trap. Like you're stuck in that circle in order to get to the outside piece where all that expansiveness is, where that limitlessness is, where that growth is, where that potential is. You got to move beyond those things that are comfortable. Um, so first identifying that you're in a comfort zone to begin with is huge. Like, okay, I'm in a comfort zone because I still have these same patterns. I'm in a comfort zone. I recognize it because I haven't grown. I'm in a comfort zone because someone has maybe called me out. First, you need to recognize that you're in the comfort zone to begin with. The second thing is to become clear about what it is that you want to achieve. Okay, so it's great that you know what's in this circle. It's great that you've identified and called yourself out about what is in this tiny little baby circle. But what is it that you want to achieve that's beyond this circle? Because you can break free of the comfort zone and still land into a different comfort zone. You can break free of the comfort zone and land into something that you don't want if you're not clear about what it is that you want to get to. So make a list of what's in your comfort zone and make a list of what it is that is outside of the comfort zone that you're aiming to be able to achieve, that you're aiming to, to get to, okay? The second step is um, to create a plan. All right. So to create a plan to move beyond your comfort zone, because here's the thing. You can say that you want to get beyond your comfort zone. You can believe that you want to get beyond your comfort zone. But if you don't have the steps to be able to get there, it's not going to happen. So one of the things that I like to do when I'm creating a plan to move beyond my comfort zone or when I'm creating a plan to work with my clients to move beyond their comfort zone is I like to first identify what are the challenges that are preventing you from moving beyond your comfort zone? Is it time? So a lot of times it's like, I want to move beyond my comfort zone and I want to become a best-selling author. But reality, I don't feel like I have the time to become a best-selling author, right? Is it time? Is that a challenge? Is it limiting beliefs? Like, is it your mindset? And you're like, you know what? I have normalized the comfort zone for so long that I don't even believe I can move beyond this comfort zone even if I tried, even if I desperately, deep, you know, really, really wanted to. Like, I'm not sure that that can actually happen. So identifying those challenges and creating a, a plan to circumvent those challenges. So, for example, it may look like, all right, I know that a challenge of mine is my mindset. So, maybe I'm going to affirm myself in the direction of the success I want. Maybe my challenge of mine is that I'm like, you know what, I, I want to write this book to become a you know expansive best-selling author and change people's lives all over the world. So, I know that I need to get support. I need to get an accountability partner or a coach to be able to take it to that next level. Really creating a plan to move beyond those challenges. I was working with a client of mine who had a huge goal to quit her nursing job and to be able to go full-time into her business and um, it was like night and day her business from a nursing job but she really really wanted to and the struggle that she was having the most when she recognized it is that she didn't have time and so I started to call out those challenges all right you don't feel like you have time what are you spending your time on and when we recognized that she would come in especially in the season where the nursing job is really demanding she was coming in this season exhausted frustrated overwhelmed and sitting on her couch and watching tv and before she knew it she, knew it, she was watching one show two shows three shows and so on and so forth so here she is spending hours upon hours watching TV. So I called that out for what it was, okay? That is a challenge, but there's a great way to move beyond that challenge by, you know, moving the remote. She actually took it a step further and had her son hide the remote so she couldn't even find it. So no longer did TV become a comfortable place because it actually became quite inconvenient because there was no remote and she wasn't about to get up and change the channel or keep pushing play on every single episode. 
So calling out that challenge and creating a plan to move beyond that challenge is so huge. The second part, so to creating a plan, this is the part to creating a plan, all right? There's steps inside of steps, um, is to recognize that failure is an opportunity to learn. Not Failure is not um, a setback or a mistake. Failure is feedback and it's an opportunity to learn. So there is a quote by Thomas Edison, and I'm going to freaking jack this up. I know I am. But when he was making the lights, when he was inventing the lights, he said, um, I did not fail. I just found a hundred or a thousand reasons that didn't, ways that didn't work. But with each reason or way that he found that did not work, he was able to come back more informed and make a better decision. So really adopting your mindset to believe that failure, there's nothing wrong with failure. There are many times that I failed, but every time I failed, I came back even harder because I realized that failure was just me moving closer in the direction to where it was that I wanted to be. As long as you understand that, then you'll continue to push beyond that comfort zone. But if you're one of those people that's like, you know what, failure is a little too scary and I'm just going to feel the fear and stay stuck right where I'm at, you'll always remain in your comfort zone. And remember, there's no growth there, okay? So really adopting the belief that failure is feedback, failure is an opportunity to learn, failure is an opportunity to be more informed moving forward. So that is huge. Um, so along with those challenges, a second piece of that is to identify your propellers. All right. I always say propellers are those things that are pushing you into the direction of the success you want. So just like we have those things, those obstacles, those barriers that are keeping us stuck or even pulling us back a little bit. We also have propellers that, that push us forward, that push us forward fast. And so identifying those propellers, when you think of this comfort zone, this circle that you have and where you're stuck in, and then you think of this outward circle of where you want to be. What are those propellers that are going to push you over like that fence, so to speak? If you're on that fence and you're kind of wavering between where you want to be, what are the propellers that are going to push you over? Is that getting support? Is that a certain like financial level of support or aspect? Is that a mindset tool? What are the propellers that are going to get you to that next step? So for a lot of my clients, when they have tried everything, they've banged their head against the wall and they have done all the things that they could potentially do. They're like, you know what? My propeller is that recognizing I am I cannot figure this out alone and it's okay to ask for support and diving into getting that support so that I can help them bridge the gap from where they are to where they want to be and more importantly, move them out of their own way, right? identifying those propellers so that you can set yourself up for success to be able to move into that. And then finally, as you're creating the plans, so we talked about identifying your challenges or your roadblocks. We talked about, um, oh my gosh, I don't want to forget this. Let me make sure I got it. Oh, accepting and acknowledging failure as a teacher then identifying your propellers, and then finally getting comfortable with discomfort, right? The reality is growth and comfort do not live on the same block. You are not going to grow if all you're seeking is being comfortable. So identifying and understanding, this kind of goes with that failure piece is like adopting the mindset that comfortability is something that doesn't exist right now and that you need to be comfortable being, being uncomfortable because you'll get there later. I always say do today what your future self will thank you for. Do you you sacrifice today to benefit your tomorrow? When we see those people that are living lavish lives like Oprah, hello, 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 good evening. When we see those people that are living those lavish lives like Oprah, she wasn't always comfortable. Stuff wasn't always easy for her. Stuff wasn't always seamless for her. But she got there because she made a commitment to focus on being a little bit discomfortable, uncomfortable, sorry, being a little bit uncomfortable to get to the comfort that she desired. Okay, so when you're creating that plan, understand those roadblocks. Cre adopt the mindset that failure is feedback, failure is a teacher. Um, identify those propellers that are going to propel you into the direction that you want to be. And then adopt uncomfortability as a temporary sacrifice to get to the level that you want to be. Okay. So again, back that up. That was a step inside of a step. All right. I'm just trying to break this down. But when you're trying to break free of your comfort zone, you want to become clear about what your comfort zone is and what's outside of the comfort zone that you're aiming towards. You want to create a plan to be able to get there, which were the four steps that I gave you, identifying those obstacles, um, adopting the mindset that failure is feedback or a teacher, identifying your propellers. And, and moving into those, adopting those, moving into those, and um, then getting comfortable with being uncomfortable, right? So now we're going to move into the third step of breaking free of your comfort zone. So again, become clear of your comfort zone, become clear of what's outside of your comfort zone that you're moving towards, and then I, adopting a plan. 
The third step is to hang out with risk takers. It is not by accident that research says that you are the average of the top five people you spend the most amount of time with. Literally, I have done this experiment with myself. I have done it with my clients. But take the top five people you spend the most amount of time with and tell me how they spend their time. You're an, you, you spend your time very similar to how they spend their time. The top five people spend their time scrolling social media and watching TV. That's what you do and that's how you spend your time. Take the top five people you spend the most amount of time with and take all of their salaries divided by five and that's how much money you make. That is not a that is not a coincidence. That is because you are who you hang around. So if you want to break free of your comfort zone, you cannot hang around people and you can love them to death, but they don't need to be in your immediate inner circle if they have normalized their comfort zone and they're not growing beyond their comfort zone. So hang out with risk takers. Hang out with people that are going to push you beyond where you're comfortable. Hang out with people that are setting that example that they're already moving out of their comfort zone. Because when you see other people doing that same thing, it validates your idea and it gives you the permission to also commit to breaking free of your comfort zone. It validates you saying, oh my gosh, if it's available for them, then this is also available for me as well. So hanging out with those risk takers is huge. Also, one of the key pieces about hanging out with those risk takers that make it huge, that make it so powerful, is that um, it forces you to be honest with yourself. Okay, because a lot of times when we hang out with people that are comfortable, we hang out with people that are doing the same things over and over again, expecting a different result. We normalize or we're not necessarily honest about our choices and how our choices impact us. Thank you for the love. And the reality is our life is a reflection of our small decisions, of our small choices, of our small actions. And so we will say things like, I don't have time to go after my goal. I don't have time to break free of my comfort zone. And the reality is you got all the time in the world. In fact, research says the average American wastes 2.9, 2.09 hours, whatever that 0 0.09 is, we'll throw that out, but we'll say two hours, right? The average American wastes two hours on average of time. So you have the time, but when you say things like that and you hang with the right people, they're gonna say, no, you have time. What's the real reason? What's the root of the reason why you don't want to do this? Why you don't want to commit to it? And typically it might be, I don't feel like it. I don't believe that is possible or I'm a little bit fearful, right? And when you call out those excuses, you're able to circumvent or move beyond those excuses, okay? So this is why it's so powerful to hang out with those people that are going to force you to up level, okay? So hanging out with those risk takers. Um, then the next step is to identify how jumping out of your comfort zone is actually going to benefit you. So a lot of times when we step out of our comfort zone, we do it because someone else told us that it was a good idea, right? Someone else called us out or we see what someone else is doing and we're trying to like copy it or we feel like we should be doing it. But it's not because it's something that we actually agree with or actually something that we relate to. So breaking free of your comfort zone requires for you to actually be in alignment with it, which requires for you to have a powerful why. So just a very tangible example. I remember a few years ago, my aunt became a health food coach. And so she started sending me all these recipes and told me all the reasons dairy was bad. And I knew that dairy was bad. I'm like, okay, like, yeah, I've heard that before. Like, great. And so I started trying to cook healthy because basically I felt guilty because of the things she was sharing. Now, fast forward a few years later, my daughter ended up developing an intolerance to it. And I was like, okay, now I got to change things. I had a powerful why to start committing to making the changes that needed to be made. And this was an example of stepping out of my comfort zone because I'm a foodie and I like cooking the same things that are relatable. I am not a person. I'm a very picky food person. As much as I love food, I like certain kinds of food. So me stepping out of my comfort zone to make new things was difficult for me, but I did it because I had a strong why. There was a strong benefit that was drawing me towards it. So when you think of stepping out of your comfort zone, what is that strong why that's going to pull you in that direction? to where you want to be. If you do not have a strong why, you're not going to get out of your comfort zone, okay? So one process that I like to use with this is I like to visualize what is on the other side. What, what does that success look like? What does it feel like? What do I see? What do I hear? What do I, what do I touch? What do I taste? What do I, like, what is it that I feel that's going to move me beyond that? And visualization is such a powerful activity because it allows you to connect your subconscious mind with your reality. Our subconscious mind is the most powerful tool, the most powerful, powerful resource that we have in our tool belt that we do not access. When you learn how to access your subconscious mind, you will literally transform your life. And that's something that I use to weave into my programs and working with my clients to help them to create massive breakthroughs simply by shifting their mind. Now, I can talk about that all day. 
But visualization is a powerful tool that you can use as it relates to your subconscious mind because when you visualize the outcome that comes from you stepping out of your comfort zone, then you're drawn in that direction. Thank you so much for the love. You're drawn in the direction of breaking free of that comfort zone. So having that powerful why and visualizing it so that you can get all of your emotions, all of your feels, all of your senses into it so that it feels real and then all of a sudden you feel directed to move in that way. Our subconscious mind is much like a robot. If you give it something to do, it's going to go to task for you and it's gonna go hard for you to get you there. So visualize what is on the other side of that comfort zone, okay? Um, then the next step is to forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for the time that you have spent where it's safe. The reality is we all seek safety and there's nothing inherently wrong with that. But when that's all that you do, you're never going to be able to grow to where you want to be. So forgive yourself in the past, forgive yourself in the present for only committing to what's safe, to only committing to what's familiar or comfortable. And when you forgive yourself, you're able to release those blockages, those frustrations, those disappointments to be able to move in to that next level, okay? And then I'll give you the final step, which the final step is to make a choice. You, my friend, are so powerful, so powerful, so powerful, so powerful. And I can, if I can be honest, we do not give ourselves enough credit for the power that we inherently have. And when we have to, yes, it is so powerful. Our subconscious mind is so powerful. When we acknowledge our own power and make a commitment to stepping into that power, we become confident, we become magnetic, we become boundless and limitless, and thank you, and we are able to move in to what we are called to move into. But that begins with making a decision and a commitment to make that happen. If you guys remember earlier on, and honestly over the last couple months, I've been sharing my journey it has been challenging. It has been so challenging to commit 100% to myself because we all have those limiting beliefs. We all have those mindset blocks that get in the way. But when I made that commitment to myself, I meant it. And every time I show up for that commitment, it validates me more and more saying, you know what? It's so worth it. I'm moving more and more into the right step or into the right direction. I'm, I'm making the right choice. And the outcome so far has been so worth it. And that's why I'm using and tracking my own journey to share with you guys so that you also see that this progress has been absolutely amazing, that it has been life changing. It's been awesome. But Part of, the, part of the commitment and part of the process was me being willing to step outside of my comfort zone, but not just willing, but me making a commitment and stepping into my power, making that decision to step out of my com comfort zone and being unapologetic about it and being confident about it. So again, for those that are just joining me, I talked about a comfort zone and how to break free. So you definitely want to rewind and watch the replay because the reality is with each new level, there is a new devil. And we all have those comfort zones that we have to move beyond because as long as we stay in our comfort zone is as long as we're going to remain stagnant. And I'm a firm believer that you don't move you don't move, you don't stand still, right? A lot of people are like, we're standing, standing still. No, you're either moving forward or you're moving backwards because when you're standing still, everyone else is moving forward behind you. And we don't want that. You are not here to be stagnant. You are not here to be still. You are here to constantly be progressing, to be moving in the direction of where you want to be. And part of making that happen is going to be breaking free of that comfort zone. Not once, not twice, but continuously making that commitment to break free of that comfort zone so that you can step in to what you're called to step into. So I'm going to rewind the steps, but I'm going to pull up my notes. I actually did not use them as much as I thought. Speaking from the heart and my own journey was, um, my own journey has helped me to be able to help other people break free of them. So when you're breaking free of your comfort zone, just a brief summary to wrap it up, become clear about what is in your comfort zone and what is outside of your comfort zone. Create a plan to break free of that comfort zone. So identifying those challenges is part of the plan. Um, creating a mindset and adopting a mindset that fear, fear is not, um, failure is not, it's not a failure. Failure is more of a teacher and an opportunity to move forward. Um, the second, the third part about making a plan is identifying those propellers that are going to propel you into the direction of where you want to be and getting comfortable being uncomfortable, right? So that's the plan. So we have become clear about what's in your comfort zone, what's outside of your comfort zone, create a plan to break free of that comfort zone so that you have a strategic step to get there. 
Um, hang out with people that are pushing you outside of your comfort zone. Hang out with those risk takers and rule breakers that are ready to like light this place up, that are excited to be able to go after what they're called to go after. Um, because part of that process is being able to be honest with yourself about the excuses and the way in which you impact your overall success. Um, and then identify what is on the other side of breaking free of your comfort zone for you and why you have that strong why to go after it. Forgive yourself and give yourself grace for the journey. OK, um, forgiving yourself for the past of where you've normalized your comfort zone. Forgive yourself for the current where you've normalized your comfort zone so that you can break that unforgiveness block to continue to move forward. And then finally, the last step is to make a commitment to yourself by stepping into your power and just making that decision to break free of the comfort zone. Here's the thing, our comfort zone, we all deal with comfort zones. I've shared that before, that with each new level, each new devil, you're gonna get a comfort zone because each time you move up a level, you make a new comfort zone. You make a new place that is familiar, that is relatable, and that's where you wanna be. But you, when you get this system, when you get this process down and understood, then you're able to commit to it each and every time so that you're constantly growing. I'm a firm believer that we do not set goals to get to a finish line and to check it off our list and say, yep, I did what you told me to do. Yep, I've done this thing. No, we set goals to, to grow and we should constantly be growing in the direction of our dreams, okay? So if you are at a place where you're like, you know what, I have huge ideas, I have visions, I have things that are inspiring me, things that I feel called to, things that I feel led to show up for, things that I want to commit to, next steps I want to take, but I'm stuck. I'm in my own way, whether it's because of limiting beliefs, whether it's because of those obstacles or barriers, whether it's because of fear, but you just feel stuck, you just feel trapped, and you're like, I don't know how to get there. Maybe it's that time. You're like, I don't know if I have the time to commit to breaking free of my comfort zone because it just seems like I'm balancing all the things and wearing all of the hats and I'm just overwhelmed, but you know that there's something bigger that you're call to then we need to talk okay dm me because i have a strategy that i am offering to only five women to be able to take your goals to that next level to be able to bridge from where you are to where you want to be without the overwhelm without the frustration without the fear keeping you bound stuck and stagnant and all of the things this is your opportunity to be able to create the life that you desire and deserve to be able to create the success and the outcome that you desire and deserve so if you are interested if you feel called if right here in this moment as you're listening to this you feel lit up in your body and you're like yep i need to make this happen what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a link in the comments below where you can schedule a call with me, but I'll share that link. It's calendly.com forward slash Nicolia Williams. So Calendly is C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y forward slash Nicolia Williams. And you can use that link to schedule a totally free call with me where we can talk about where you're stuck and how I as a coach can support you with getting out of your own way and moving forward, getting unstuck. Okay. So use that link. Um, or DM me and let me know. And I look forward to connecting with you all super, super soon and breaking free of that comfort zone so that you can step into that boundless, limitless version of who you know you are truly, truly called to be. So have an amazing evening, morning, or day, depending on when you're watching this. And I will check in and chat with you all later. <laughs>